Amen. God bless you. Welcome, Prophet. Hello. Hallelujah. Okay. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Shandela Sokola Shala Seta Ika Sandela Asoko Chala Aistai. Take your seats gently. Take your seats. Just sit down. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up before the Lord. Close your eyes. The presence of the Lord just walked in here. Ah, we thank you. Shakala. Lift your hands, somebody. Pull on the anointing. Pull on the presence of God. Because he's here right now. He came in with me. And he's here right now. Lift your hands. I've had my eyes closed the whole time I'm standing here. I haven't looked at anyone. My eyes are still closed. You see? Because I'm in the presence of the Lord right now. I don't want to look at anything, anyone, anywhere. I want to look at him right now. But what's happening here right now, something will change in lives of people even beyond this place. For the Spirit of the Lord is pouring out his fire to break people loose from all foolishness and bring them into the realms of wisdom. If you don't ask for that, you can't get it. If you don't want it, you can't have it. If no one told you that you needed to change your world and your life, you've listened to the wrong people. And I stand as a mediator in between heaven and earth, Lord, right now. In the presence of the Holy Ghost right here. That you're going to cause good people to be severed out from the realms of foolishness and wickedness. You're going to begin to cause change to happen for people in ways that has never been seen before. And God is going to begin to advance you. You're going to begin to see changes from today, this very day. In this fourth month of the year, on this Sunday here, we're going to begin to see God begin to change things for the better. If you don't walk forward and advance, God is not pleased. Don't sing your way into some feeling of emotion that I'm doing God's service because I'm telling him great. No, the Lord says, I know I'm great. I don't have to be reminded. I receive your praise and thanksgiving when it's, you know, genuinely heartfelt and you worship me and praise me. I take that, says the Lord. But I'm not the one who's supposed to have everything. You who are called by my name, who say you're my people, are supposed to be the ones that have what I have. And if you didn't get it yet, don't despair just get it now. The thing is, you never want to look back because what happened before is irrelevant for the next day and what's coming next. The Lord says, <laughs> I was sitting in the car for a minute and I thought something. I was hearing the song and bless your heart, brother, whoever you were, singing the song, telling Jesus how great he is, wonderful thing to say. I salute you for that. However, However, in addition, I felt something I said out loud from the way that God has made my mind to be brilliant in his own thought, in his own thoughts and ways. I thought, you're telling Jesus he's great, but he has all the power already. But how much power do you have? See, the day is coming now for the church that we've lost time to just do things that see, are, are, are not going to produce anything great in the days to come. We need to receive the power of God and be agents of change. Someone that's filled with the Spirit of God, 
touched by the presence of God, filled with the power of God, usually doesn't take a lot of time for preliminaries and discussions that don't mean anything, you know, about something that happened already. No, forget about the past. Lift your hands. I, I want to wave the, the word Manasseh over the church. I'm speaking to the church world right now. That you forget what was behind and press on to what is before. The name Manasseh in the Bible, I don't have time to explain it. I'm on a, I gotta, I'm on a, I forgive me, I'm on a very tight moment here. I just got a dash. But I just want to pray and prophesy over this place. Something will remain after I've left. It's not about me. I'm the messenger. I'm the carrier of the glory. It's not about me being somewhere for a long time. I can just meet you and we have a brief encounter and the power of God will touch you. And it was beneficial that you met me. I was with a businessman last night, very wealthy man, very successful man. And the presence of God touched him at the table. I said, from today, things will be different for you. And he's already successful. Many people would look at him and say, he's very successful. And what does he need? He needs the touch of the Holy Ghost. And what we prayed and prophesied, things change when the prophet comes. So you don't want to look back. You want to look forward. Hello? Hi? Say hi. Say hallelujah. Say upon us if you will. Say uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You say amen. I say amen. You say hallelujah. That's okay. It's all good. These are good words. And amen and hallelujah work in every language. Japanese, Chinese, Swahili, Creole, Rwandese, Ethiopian, whatever their language is called, Spanish, French, Italian, Greek, Hindi, Malayalam, which is one language in India. Malayalam is spelled the same forward and backwards. M-O-L-L-Y something. You spell it forwards and backwards. It's the same. Malayalam. It's a place in India. They have their own language. They have their own culture. Even in that language, hallelujah and amen are not translated. These are good words. Telling God he's great is good. It's good, but you got to go past that. Are you catching this? Lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm going past. I want to receive your power. I want to receive your glory. I want to have a great life. I want to do something in my world to bring change. You see the streets here. You see the people here. You see the environments here in the city of Nairobi and anywhere you are. And things are the same because nobody got a new idea. God is so full of ideas, when the Holy Spirit visits you, you won't even be able to write them all down. That's why I carry many devices to record. I have this one. I have another one in my other pocket. Yeah? Because God speaks at a rate of speed, I can't catch it all. I have hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of pages of notes of things God said through me. And I can't, I can't fulfill it all. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, touch me. Now, let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you from the Bible. John 21, 25, which is the last verse of the Gospel of John, said, if it were to be written all that Jesus did and said and performed the miracles he did and what he did, I suppose, John said, that the world, the whole entire earth, uh, the world could not contain the books and the volumes to be written thereof. Can you believe that? Jesus was so busy on a daily basis. He did so many things uh, that John, who was his beloved, who was next to him, who caught his spirit, caught his anointing, caught his ways. He was with him for three and a half years even before, walked with him everywhere, and he said everything that Jesus did can never be documented because he did so much. Hello? Unfold your arms, brother. You're blocking the flow. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, please. But God wants to change you from today.
This is an example. Everybody look at him. I don't want to embarrass him, but look at him. How are you going to change if you're not like, yes, Lord? We say we want to be like Jesus. We tell Jesus he's great, you know? He's so great. You're so great. Jesus says, so what? You know, Jesus is humble. Hello? As powerful as he is, he's very humble. He was very humble. There were times he answered them not a word when they were questioning him. And it was even said in the scripture that he could have called 12 legions of angels down, which is tens of thousands of angels, to rescue him and even pull him off the cross. Undo the nails. Heal his feet. Heal his hands. Straighten him up. Wash the blood off him. Pull the crown of thorns off his head. Could have done it in one second. But he didn't because he had a purpose to mediate for mankind. How humble is a man to do that? To give himself like a lamb to the slaughter. To give himself to be abused. To be spat upon. To be his beard to be ripped out of his face. His hair pulled out of his head. Punched and kicked and whipped to the point where you can see his ribs and the, the white tissue under the skin. They used a cat of nine tails, which had metal pieces and pieces of bone and metal in the ends of the whip, that when they hit him with it and pulled it back, the flesh cut and tore off. And he didn't, he didn't stop it, but he could have. So Jesus is very humble, you know. He doesn't need accolades. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody lift your hands and say praise the Lord. He's the king of glory, the great I am. He doesn't need anybody's help. And now, that's all over. That horror show is finished long time, 2,000 plus years ago. He's at the right hand of God. It's all finished. And he's sitting there waiting for us. And we're telling him, Lord, you're great. Lord, you know. No, we're great and we're supposed to know. Lift your hands. If you don't make that connection, you're never going to do a thing. Please, I'm not trying to speak a negative word over anybody. I'm not trying to confess anything bad. But it's truth. John 8, 32 said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So you can't just exist where you are and look at everything and leave it the same. Am I helping you yet? Somebody shout yes. You're sitting there looking like you're very quiet. Uh, what, what's up? Look at your neighbor and say, what's up? Look at your other neighbor and say, what's up? What's up? Look at your other neighbor and say, what's up? Smartphone. <laughs> if you don't have a smartphone, you have a stupid phone. Hello? Get rid of the stupid phone and get a smartphone and peer out into the world and see how great the world is. There are people that are doing things you can't even imagine. When you see it, you want to cry. I came here. I said, what is this place? Why is this place like this? Everybody's all over the place. I mean, it has to change. Lift your hands. I came to pray. I came to pray and prophesy, and I have to go. I'll come and teach another time, or we'll arrange another event in the region. Let's do that. Let's bring the leaders together. Let's have a corporate event in this area here. And we make sure we have the direction set, everybody's set. We get there on time, we blow it up, and everybody's touched by the power of God. And things in this land change for the better. But first, you have to catch it as an individual, you see. If you didn't get it, it's not going to happen. How many, how many are not happy of the life you're living? Lift your hand. I got my hand up. How many are not satisfied with where you are? Oh, you people are religious, or you're a liar. You want to lie to Jesus. He'll, you know what he'll do? He'll go, hmm. You know how people do in Nairobi? They go, hmm. You know when they want to say that way, they just go like that. Indians, when they want to say yes, they go like this. No means this. What do I think I am doing? Where are you, where, where are you going? Uh, is it good? Is it okay when they mean no? They go, no. That's what Indian, Indian sign language. Jesus will look at you and do that. He'll just go, you know what? I'm 
trying to help them, but they're not catching. Hello? You never heard nobody like me, and I'm proud of that. In God's presence, not pride. I celebrate the grace of God upon my life. Lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody. Y'all are too quiet. You know, you act like you're hot and all this and uncomfortable, but this is your place. I should be the one to complain, not you. I should be the one to say, oh, wow, I'm, but I'm here. I came all the way here. I came all the way here. You see, here I am. Is this my place? No. Have I ever been here? No. Do I really know where I am? Not really. You're just in the environment, but you don't want to exert energy to change your world. If you don't, it won't change. And I got to tell you something about God that I've learned about him. If you don't move forward, he won't make you. He'll leave you there. He'll look at you and go, hmm, I wish they would really move. Men that are powerful, women that are powerful, they move and God doesn't just speak by instructions. He speaks by ideas. A brilliant idea can be an instruction from God. God can put a thought in your mind, and it's his direction for you. I was sitting in the car for a minute. I was very perplexed. Uh, help me, Jesus. Sorry, whatever. I, help me, help me, help me. I'm human. I was feeling very like, you know, a lot because I'm cross-wired. There's so many events happening, so many things I'm doing. And I've had the most busy week. I've had meetings from morning to night for the last seven days, and I hardly slept for seven days. And here I am. You see? I got up very early this morning, got ready and got dressed to come here. Came with my television crew and everybody. Oh, oh, yes. My bishop friend and everybody, we're all here. Speed and acceleration comes from thought. What you get in your life first comes into your mind before it comes into your hand. Last night, people would think this is strange, but I found it by accident and I was curious, so I turned it on. I didn't listen to it for long. But there was this guy on the YouTube and he was saying, how many have heard of YouTube? Thank you. Look at your neighbor say, what's up? What's up? What's up? YouTube. And it was something about millionaire something. And the guy says, I am a millionaire. I am enjoying my millionaire lifestyle. I am enjoying the things that a million dollars buys for me. I am enjoying. I was like, wow. And I played that right before I went to sleep. What time was it? Five? Four? Five? A.M.? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The whole night I was busy. I was working. I was doing so many. The whole night. I went to sleep for a few minutes. Woke up again. I thought, oh, I have about four other things to finish before the morning. And I did all of those. <laughs> I think it was five o'clock. I think it was five. Five-ish. Four, four something. Five. I was just going to go to sleep for a few minutes. And and, uh, you know, I found this. I was like, this is good, man. Who talks like this in the ghetto? Who talks like this in the family? Who? Nobody. But that's why it doesn't happen. Faith is voice activated. <laughs> and when you begin to speak, things will begin to follow your word. What you want, you can carve it out with your mind, Bishop Michael. You can carve it out with your mind, write it down, make a mental image, work, let it work in your imagination, and it will be fulfilled according to what you said. The book of Joshua talks about the commanders that came. The book of Daniel talks about those who, uh, uh, he, he had the angel of the Lord come to him and he said, the minute you set yourself to humble yourself and to gain understanding, it wasn't just to receive answer to a prayer. 
Daniel was praying for wisdom and understanding. And he was humbling himself before God. The angels talked about that. He didn't say, the minute you asked for this. He didn't say that. Read the book of Daniel, chapter 10, 11, and 12. Daniel, it said, the minute you humbled yourself and to get understanding, and then you were praying, the angel was sent. God heard you right then, and the angel was sent, but the prince of Persia began to block his way. Only 21 days, I thought. That's not a long time. I can wait three weeks for anything. I wish it was only three weeks all the time. I wish, but sometimes it's longer than that. And then the Bible says after that, there was another prince, the prince of Greece. There was Persia, the Persian devil, and then there was a Grecian devil trying to stand in the way to block the flow because the angel was coming with the answer. How powerful does that say that we are, that we can ask for something and it's already on its way to us? Lift your hands. I got to stop. I don't know if you're understanding me. Lift your hands. Are you under so who's understanding me? Wave your hand like this. All right, thank you, thank you. Put your hands up again. Yeah, thank you. The other one? It works. I see it's working better now. I've helped you a lot. Shandalaba. Shakahai or so. I found the scripture in First Chronicles 16. I'm going to say this very briefly. It says, when they went from kingdom to kingdom, nation to nation, the Lord let nobody do anything wrong to them. He, re he rebuked even kings for their sake. And he said, touch not my, my, my anointed and my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Don't play with my voice because the voice comes to create and change things. And he said, those who want to oppose the voice will pay the price. Isaiah 41, 11 says, those who are, who are against you will be ashamed and disgraced. They'll become as nothing. And if they continue to fight you, they'll even perish. So don't worry about the enemies. Psalm 37, verse 1, don't worry about the evildoers, just do my work. Jesus says something powerful in the gospel. He said, boys, his disciples, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Nathaniel, Bartholomew, James, James the Lesser, James the Greater, who was the other one there, a few other guys, and the ladies that were there, he told them, he said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. And then he told the guys, stand up and let's go. Let's keep going. He said, arise, let us go hence. It doesn't matter what the devil's trying to do or what he wants to do. It's us that are agents of change. Everybody lift your hands high. Karanchayata. Play this message back. We'll work, make sure you get it. And go through it. Write it down. Take notes. Let it get into your mind and say, you know what? Everything I'm seeing isn't right. Everything around is not, is not the best it can be. I need to be the one to change it in Jesus' name. In God's minds, we are agents of change. I wrote a great book. The foreword was written by the great Archbishop Harrison Nanga, who everybody in Kenya knows. In fact, he's the father of the nation these days. God has really elevated him after I've, God's used me to prophesy over him uh, so many times, and the Lord really has blessed him and elevated him. A great, great friend. Great father in the faith, great apostle, very blessed man. He's very focused. He's an agent of change. He really moves. He really does things. We need to emulate such men. As I, Jesus said, I, no, Paul said, as I follow Christ, follow me. As I'm doing him, Jesus said, be imitators of God. Paul said, where, where's the scripture? Somewhere you can find it. Be imitators of God, dear children. Be imitators. What did God do? He created everything. He wasn't slow. He's a creator. Lift your hand. As God is a creator, so I am a creator. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. This book is life-changing. You can get it later. I don't have time to do it right now. I gave a copy to your bishop here and let him be blessed by it. I came to be a blessing, whatever. You could be a blessing to me. Uh, Bishop Michael knows my phone numbers. You can, you can send a love gift. You can do, you could do that for my coming. Yeah, hello. All right. So you can talk about that later as I take my leave. I love you. It's 
obvious. I came all the way here. Why would I do this? Lift your hands. I love God's people. Lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now with me. Shande asalai shtukuta fabrasha. Father, I wanted to say earlier when I started to pray, but I got caught away in the spirit and began to go into a message. This message from you, which just came from heaven. I didn't have any notes. This just all flowed by the Holy Ghost. But I wanted to say in the beginning, praying, so I'll say it now. I didn't get to it, but I'll say it now. Everything that concerns us, perfect it. Everything that we're missing, bring it now. We command it to come to us. Every property, every land, every house, every person, every relationship, every resource, every money. Come to us right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to come. You're on the earth and somebody is holding you, but they can't hold you because God has deemed it is for us. And that we command it to come to us right now in Jesus' name. We're not going to take all day to pray, Father, 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 Father. Father the Father's heard us a hundred times. We need to speak to it ourselves. Speak to the mountain, it'll be removed, Mark eleven twenty three. What thing? Mark eleven twenty four. the things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and then you will have them. John 15, 7, as you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask for what you will, and it'll be done for you by my Father who's in heaven. Hello? Father, I thank you that you're going to cause your favor to come upon your elect chosen people. You love us too much than to leave us where we are. You love us too much than to leave us where we are. You can't leave us where we are. You spoke to me, Lord, about the next property I'll have two days ago. I'm like, yeah. You told me when it will happen. I receive it. It's there. I don't know. All of all the details, I don't need to know. I just need to move according to the plan of God. Baranchala Sonjala is Toko Chayata. Be a commander from today. Hello. Pastor, I pray the fire comes on you to teach the people. Not just to be singing songs for two hours. It's good to sing songs. I'm not saying it's not. Take less time with that and take more time in the word. Teach the Bible to the people. Teach the principles of the Bible to the people. Let them understand what God says because John 8, 32. John 8, 31 says, you, you, you continue in my word then you're my disciples indeed. So if you don't continue with his word and learn his word, you're not his disciple. No matter how much you sing or dance or attend church, we need to be learning the word. Church is a place for training, for reigning. And John 8, 32 said then, the next verse, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. It will make you something you weren't before, a free person, a rich person, a prosperous person, a blessed person, a powerful person. A person moving according to the plan of action that God has. And I say, so be it in Jesus' name. So be it in Jesus' name. Let's pray for one second. Parete. Everything that concerns us, the best of everything, we're going to have it. We declare it. It's coming to us from around the world and from here locally. From all over the land and from all over the world. Good things are for us. Untoward things or maybe for the wicked, but for the righteous, <laughs> it's time for us to flourish. The Lord said, this is going to be the day and the hour of manifestations of my promises to my elect. To the wicked, I have nothing to promise. All they're going to get is judgment. Hopefully they repent. Most of them don't. Hopefully they do. They escape hell, but that's their own problem. Get out of our way. I prophesy no man, no devil will stand before us all the days of our life. We will move and accomplish everything that God has planned and ordained for us in Jesus' name from this very day and hour in Jesus' name. Be a student of the Bible. Don't be afraid of teaching. Preachers, don't think you have to shout at people and do all these things. Open your Bibles to the book of Let's Go. Bring your Bible to church. I have many other books that I've written. I don't have time to talk about them now, but you see them in my hand. Plus, this is the best book of all time, the Holy Bible. This is heavy what I have here. So, hey, wait, it has a weight. I'm holding it up. Take this. Jesus said, learn of me. How will you learn of me? By taking heed according to his word. How will a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to his word. Hello? 
You got to make up your mind what you want. Here's the thing I found out too. I, I, I'm trying to close. What you really want, you'll do something about getting it. What you really want, you'll say the thing that I don't want is not acceptable around me. It's not acceptable for me. I have to have the better thing. Hello? Hello, hello, hello? All right, look me up on YouTube. Look me up on Facebook. Uh, on my website, you can sign up for my free e-newsletter, uh, thomasmanton.com, T-H-O-M-A-S. Somebody can make a note of that right now. T-H-O-M-A-S. You find that in John chapter 20, Jesus saith unto Thomas. That's how you spell it. T-H, how Jesus said it to Thomas. T-H-O-M-A-S-M-A-N-T-O-N. Man, like man, ton. Thomasmanton.com. C-O-M. T-H-O-M-A-S-M-A-N-T-O-N dot com. And there's a box there where you can get the newsletter. I did a great teaching called The 12 Laws of Success. You watching online, do that right now. Go on to my website. Get another phone. Get another. Go on your laptop or pause this for a minute. Open the website. Put in your name, address, and phone number. I mean your name, email, and phone number to get our newsletter and it, I think it will come back to you automatically. If not, it will get the message and we'll send it to you on the topic of success. It's absolutely free. And then you'll be able to know, uh, ha have access to our teachings. Lay your hands on your head. So Lord, help this mind of mine to get organized, to get brilliant, to get learned. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Uh, okay. And the Facebook and the YouTube, the links are all there on the website. Just go there and click on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and you'll see our messages. I love you. Good night. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed. <laughs>